se his hus over ston ye timbrode fell upon the house these these winds and this flood and rain all fell upon the house and and attacked it more or less that's good that's good stuff um so the old english that we're going to look at is um is an an easy passage uh, that I have taken from uh, an old English reader from the 19th century. Um, there's actually, as a side note, a lot of really good uh, 19th century textbooks for, um, for, for ancient languages um, that are totally freely available and you can use, you know, pedagogically speaking, they are um, kind of out of date in some ways, but they're free, which is a really great thing. And there's a lot of good content. Um, so there is a reader, there are actually two uh, Old English readers uh, that are available, and I've taken this selection uh, from one of those. And the selection is uh, an excerpt from the Gospel of Matthew. It is um, Matthew 7, 24 to 27, if you're interested. And it's, it's a fairly short text, and it doesn't have a ton of vocabulary in it, and it doesn't have a ton of complicated grammar. So it is a kind of a nice beginner text. So I thought we would go over that. And, and you know, if you haven't read Old English before, this could be your first time reading Old English. And yeah, that would be a kind of cool milestone. And if you have read Old English before, um, then, you know, always great to get more experience doing it. Um, and if you've only read Beowulf, this is going to be just a lot easier. Um, so that being said, without further ado, let us take a look at at some some old english let's um let's see if we can zoom in a bit zoom in a bit on this yeah there we go okay so apologies for the scrolling here we go so the complete text i will just read out first and then what we'll do is we'll go line by line through the text and we'll look at each word, what it means, um, if there are any mnemonics or or, or um, descendants in modern English that you should be aware of, we can we can look at that and then just analyze how all of the words relate to each other and how the grammar works. So I will take a, a drink and then I will get to reading. Let's see if I can do the proper dramatic reading. Alt thara the thos mine word ye hirth, on tha wirth, bith ye leech thom wizan were, se his hus over ston ye timbrode. Tha com thar rain on the Mitchell flood, on thar blau on windas, on ahruron on that hus, on hit na ne feol. Sodliche hit was over ston ye timbrod. And alt thera the ye hirth thos mine ward, and tho ne wirth, se bit ye leech thom dusian men, the ye timbrode his hus over sand chosel. Tho rinde hit, and thar com flood, and blauen windas, and ahruron on that hus, and that hus. Feul, and his hrire was Mitchell. Okay, so how are we going to break this down? Well, we're going to do it by line, line by line. Um, so let's take the first sentence. Alch thara the thought. Sorry, alch thara the thos mine ward yehurt. Let's just take that little chunk. So alch, the first word is actually the ancestor of our modern English each. It is um, it is an interesting word because it takes a genitive case. So if you're not familiar with the genitive case, the genitive case is a way of manipulating a, a it's a way a, a noun could be expressed in Old English uh, that that it, that expresses the meaning of. So it's very similar to the apostrophe s in modern English. So alch thara, each of them. So even in English, we like to have this of after each sometimes. Um, you you can say each person, but you can say each of the people. 
And so in Old English, we had this, this situation where alch required a genitive. And the next word is very kind and obliging in giving us a genitive. So we have this word thara. Thara is um, the genitive plural of the article. And we can translate it as of them. Uh, so alch thara together, each of them. What's next? Alch thara the. The is uh, a relative marker. And so um, just as we had our relative marker um, in the conlang that we, we worked on earlier, which was C. Um, and if you're viewing this on YouTube, go check out that video. Um, we have in Old English this, this relative marker, the. So, alch thera the, each of them that, or each of them uh, who. Alch thera the thos mine wort. Well, let's take this bit as a chunk. Thos mine wort. Now, these are all in the accusative plural. And what we, we have here is, is a, a phrase which means literally these my words. How would we express this more idiomatically in present day English? We'd say something like these words of mine. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to be very, um, very archaic, you could say what they said in Old English. Um, these my words. So, alch thara the thos mine ward yehurth. Yehurth. This is just hears. Yehuran, to hear. So Yehurth is just the third person singular. Each of them that hears these my words, these words of mine. Alchtherathe thos mine ward Yehurth. Okay, so good. That's a nice little chunk. Alchtherathos the thos mine ward Yehurth. What do we get next? And tha wirth. So not only are we interested in those who hear the words, but and and, and, tha wirth, and them works. So, works put into practice, really. So, each of them that hears these words of mine and puts them into practice or works them, what are we going to say about this person? Each of these people. Each of these people, beef, beef yelich, from wizan were. So we have here, and if you're looking at the bottom bits, I'll just scroll down a little. Um, we have this verb beef. This is the third person singular of beon, which is um, which is used. So in, in Old English, we have two verbs to be. We have beon and wezan. And beon is used to express kind of general truths, uh, you know, the facts of of, of how the world work, uh, how the world works. And so that's perfect for this case where we're getting a sort of a, a parable. So it's not like one specific person was like someone else on a different occasion. It was, you're just saying anyone who hears these things is like, as a general truth, what it, well, who is it going to be like? Um, Beth yelich. So I spoiled this a bit. Yelich is like. Um, Beth yelich. Thom wizan were, the wise man. Thom wizan were, this is all in the dative case. So now we're getting all of our cases here. Um, dative is going to be uh, required by yelich, which means like. You've heard perhaps in some archaic English, this is like unto the blah, 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 blah. Um, this is a, similar. So we could also think of the word similar. Now that I have it in my head, similar to, so data of the data of case is going to be the thing that um, that corresponds in many cases to the the present day English to, so it's the recipient of a of something given will be in the data of case, so similar to, tham wizan were, the wise man, and you may have heard this before. If you haven't, it's a cool thing, were. This is the word for man in Old English. Um, well, one of them anyway. 
Uh, and this is the same uh, where as in werewolf, so man wolf. Um, so that's kind of cool if you haven't heard that before. Um, right. So each of them that hears these words of mine and works them is like the wise man. Okay. We're not done with the sentence yet, incidentally, but we'll take a break here. Um, Yes, Alethea points out that uh, the word for here does look like a, a past participle. It does. Yehurth. Um, often in Old English, you'll find that there are two forms for a verb, one with ye and one without, and they're just sort of in free variation with each other. So you can get have it with the ye, have it without the ye, um, even outside of the past participle, um, which is kind of an interesting thing. And I, I don't know exactly why that is or, or where that where that came in or or what purpose that serves but yeah it does seem to be the case um hydration break okay let's finish this sentence because it's getting long so is like the wise man each of the these people who hears my words and works them is like the wise man what wise man so here we have a different strategy used to form a relative clause. Um, you can use the definite article, um, se, as a relative um, pronoun, referring back to were. So is like the wise man who, se, who did what? Se his hus overston je timbrode. And here we have this um, SOV quality of Old English coming out. And so, who, his house, his house, not so hard to see um, what that means. Over stone, on stone, over, just meaning on, uh, in this case. Over stone, je timbrode, built. Je timbrode, related, perhaps, obvious, perhaps not to the word timber. Uh, what you might build a house out of. So ye timbran is to build. So like the wise man who built his house over or on stone. Se his hus over stone ye timbro de. Okay. Um, you'll see I put a little uh, footnote on this. This is um, for those who are sort of old English nerds, but uh, usually we see that over would not take an accusative unless we had motion towards, so on to, but this seems to be an exception to that. Um, so you can read that if you're if you're an old English nerd as well. Um, Yelich is related to modern like, also to German gleich. Um, oftentimes in, in present day English, this ye yeah, um, prefix will just drop off. And so it'll you'll there'll be no um, no trace of it remaining. In some cases, there, uh, there's a, a schwa um, at the start of, uh, of the word when you have a, a historic ye. And in some cases, you will have, um, you'll have, um, well, no, let's just put that aside. Most of the time, you will, you will lose the ye, and it will just not show up at all. Um, of course, modern like has the uh, k rather than the ch, um, unlike yelich. Okay, let's see. And oftentimes you'll see that, um, whether that could be, no, I, I don't know in the case of yelich, um, but often you will see the ch existing alongside a k variant. Um, so we have something like chel and keel. So a chael is um, a ship, and a keel, uh, K-E-E-L. Um, usually the K one comes from Old Norse, and the ch one does not. The ch one comes uh, down through Old English. However, in some, I believe in some uh, varieties of Old English, we had this uh, K going on rather than the ch. Um, northern varieties, actually. Uh, so you have things like Scots, kirk instead of church. Um, but yes. That's good. That's good stuff. 
Uh, okay, so now we've finally uh, reached the end of our first sentence, and we are going to forge ahead to our second sentence. What is going on in our second sentence? Sentence. Okay, so our second sentence is this: Thaw com thar rain, and Mitchell flood, and thar blow on windas, and a huron on that hoose, and hit no ne fail. Translation. And then there came rain and a great flood, and there blew winds and fell upon the house, and it did not fall down at all. Okay, so how do we get one from the other? So we start off with thaw. Thaw is then. So then, and then we have the verb kolm, came. So this is just the third person singular past, form, uh, past tense form of kuman, to come. And interestingly, we have this this verb second phenomenon occurring in English that you'll that anyone who studied German will be uh, intimately familiar with. So instead of saying then the rain came, we have then came the rain, which we still do get in present day English, especially in sort of the start of, 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 of fairy tales and things like that. Um, once lived in the forest walked a mighty hunter or something like that. So you do have some traces of this verb second phenomenon, but here in Old English, it's much more of a thing. Um, not 100% of the time, but but it's 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 pretty pretty standard. Tha kom thar. So then came there. So here we have thar um, being used existentially. Then there came rain. Um, so I've spoiled the next word rain is rain um not a huge surprise um often you will see this uh spelled r-e-g-n in old english but there's this variant that has no g and has a long a long vowel instead rain instead of rain um so then there came rain and and michel flood so michel um great uh, not a word that uh, survives in sort of everyday usage today, but um, you may have heard mickle or muckle um, in uh, Scots, uh, which is the descendant of this, and also lacking that palatalization of Michel. So there came rain and Michel flowed, a great flood. Flowed, um, it could be a literal flood or just flowing waters. Um, on thar blewon windas, and there blew winds. Nothing too complicated there. Oh, question: Does the uh, word Michel have any connection to mighty? Um, not that I know of. Although it may, if we go back far enough. My uh, my Proto-Germanic is uh, is a bit rusty, so. Um, I'm not sure, um, but that's a good question. Uh, I will, I, I will, I will find that out and put the answer in uh, in um, the comments. Yeah, uh, good question. Okay, so on the thar blewon windas, and there blew winds. So this more or less goes one to one into modern English. On um, ahruron on that hoose. So this probably is the hardest word in this entire passage. Ahruron. It is a third person plural past tense form of ahreozan, which means something like to to rush at or fall upon or attack. Um, Hreozan is a, uh, a verb that may that meant to fall. Um, it's not one that gave us any uh, modern descendants that I know of. Um, so here we have this this ahruron on that hus. So it fell upon the house. These these winds and this flood and rain all fell upon the house and and attacked it more or less. Um, but what happened to this house? Because remember, this is the wise man. Um, and hit no ne fail. And it, 
hit it. Um, referring back to that hoos, which is neuter. So that's why we get hit here, which is the neuter form. No ne feol. No ne is um, it's a, a phrase that means not not at all, not in the least, absolutely not. So it did not fall down at all. No ne feol, the ancestor of fell. So then there came rain and a great flood and there blew winds and these winds and rain and flood all fell upon the house and it did not fall down at all. Why not? Sold liche hit was over stone yet timbrod. So, you know, we, we, we might know the answer already. We might be able to guess because it's built on stone. But sold liche, indeed... Um, this is soth, soth um, as in forsooth, truth. So truly uh, would be another another translation of soth liche. Um, soothly, if you wanted to go directly and, and, and come up with a, a modern English version of this word. But indeed is a better translation. Indeed, hit was over stone ye timbrod. So we've seen all of this before. It was built on stone. Um Again, yetimbrod from yetimbran, although this is the past participle form. Whereas before we had yetimbrode, the just the, the past tense form. Okay, great. We are halfway through. We've heard what happens to the wise man. What happens to the one who's not so wise? Oops. On alch tharo. The ye hurt thos mine ward, and tho ne worth. Se bit ye leech thom duzian men, the ye timbrode his hus over sand chosen. Okay, so most of this is old news to us at this point. And and. Alch thara, same as in the first sentence, each of them. The ye hurt thos mine ward, who hear these words of mine. On tha ne wirkt. So we have the slight difference here, and does not work them, does not put them into practice. Se bith ye leech thom duzian men. And this is a cool part. So is like the foolish men, duzi. I mentioned this, um, I've, I've mentioned this a few times in various, in various venues. Um, again, we have this word doozy, which means foolish, but we actually have a modern English descendant of this word, which is dizzy, you know, as if you've spun around and you're sort of the world's spinning now. Dizzy originally etymologically meant foolish. So here we have thom doozy on men. Um, we have the date of case again because of yelich. So he is similar to or like the foolish man. Here we're using the word man or men in the dative case um, for, for man rather than where. Um, man actually would, could refer to any person, um, but um, for the parallelism, I've translated it here as man. Fe ye timbro de his hus over sand cheosel. Um, the yetimbro de his hus, his hus um, who built his house, over sand cheosel. This is a kind of an interesting word. So it means sand, but it's actually a compound of sand, which is sand, and cheosel, which means gravel. And actually there is a modern English, um, although I think it's not used particularly widely, uh, a descendant of this word, which is chisel. And it's not the chisel that you use to, you know, um, you know, carve things. Uh, it's it's a word that means gravel. Um, so if anyone has that word uh, chisel in their um, in their in their English, uh, let me know because that's really cool. Uh, I personally do not. I had to look it up. So we're talking about the foolish man who built his house on sand. Okay, sand and gravel. All right, what's next? We have a new sentence. The, oh, 
Yeah, it's the last sentence. Okay, let's see what happened. Tha rinde hit on thar kom flod on the blow one windas on a huron on that hus on that hus fell. Let's stop there. So tha rinde hit rinde is rained. Um, the verb is rinan. So then it rained, then rained it um, by our V2 word order, then rained it on thar kom flod. And there came a flood or flowing of water and blew on windas and blew the winds and the winds blew. And all of these ahruron fell upon, attacked on that hus just as before, but this time that hus fell, that house fell. And we're going to bring it home with the final, the final lesson of this parable. And his hrire was Mitchell. So it's not just that the house fell, the house fell in a big way. And his hrire and its destruction, hrire, fall, ruin, destruction, was Michel was great. Um, one thing to remark about this pronoun here, his, his um, could be, you know, this is the ancestor of present day English, his, but in Old English, it could also refer to neuter, um, to neuter nouns. So we have that hus, which is neuter, but we're still going to use his um, to refer to it. And his hrire and its destruction was Michel. And its destruction was great. So that brings us to the end of our little parable. And if you've never read Old English before, hopefully that um, gave you a sense of what the language is like. And, um, you know, maybe that it's not quite as scary or challenging as um, as if you start off with Beowulf and, you know, you, you, you're, you're dealing with poetry and you're dealing with all sorts of um, vocabulary that you'll never see again. Um, and strict metrical requirements. Instead, we're reading some simple prose and with a lot of repetition. And, you know, read more of this stuff and soon you'll be reading Old English. Um, so if uh, you've enjoyed this and you like this, this sort of thing, um, do consider subscribing. Um, more will come. Um, and if you are if you're the kind of person who uses Discord, we have a Discord. The link will be in the description. And, you know, keep on old Englishing.